Hi, my name's Kevin Hicks. Welcome to my YouTube channel, The History Squad. Now, today's video has been voted in by my Patreon members. Hey, guys, thanks a million. It's all about the medieval joust. What was it all about? Why did they do it? And we've also been having a look at some of the terrible mishaps, the injuries that some of these knights sustained. Uh, some of them proved to be fatal. So you can trace the origins of the joust all the way back to the Roman times, to the gladiatorial bouts in the Colosseum, that kind of thing. But also it was spread out around the world in India in the medieval times. Apparently they had jousting too. But jousting was just one part of a tournament. So these tournaments, they were a massive affair. You could get the melee, 200 men on horses backed by foot soldiers attacking 200 men on horses backed with foot soldiers. It was a mock battle. The problem they had was they were using live blades. This was incredibly dangerous. In fact, in 1095, this is one of the earliest records, Count Henry III of Louvain was killed in one of these incredible tournaments. So things had to change. So it was Edward I who said, hey, hang on guys, uh, let's blunt these swords. But the melee, it was important because it trained men for combat, stamina. And you could actually capture one of your enemy knights and then you held him for ransom. So you made some money. It was all of this business of honing your skills on your horse, your equestrian skills. And then of course you had the hand-to-hand -hand combat events within the tournaments. These were a test of skill and strength and some of the weapons that were used were incredible. You had the mace, the dagger, the battle axe, but also you had your great two-handed swords to use as well. But what was happening was the joust was becoming more and more popular because it was a spectacle. People could actually watch it and there was prestige. It was one-on-one. -on -one. So some knights attending the great tournaments would actually hold back from the melee, from the hand-to-hand -hand combat. They would wait for the joust, conserving their energy. And the joust was the pinnacle of this training for the knight in armour. So, the joust, jousting, what was it all about? Well, I've made you a model. This is Kev's model of a joust. If two men, two knights on horseback going at each other with a lance. It's a pageant. It's a parade. It's a deadly sport. People come to support their favourite knight, maybe their local earl or whatever. And it was very, very popular amongst the elite classes because it gave them a chance to practice their equestrian skills, to practice their martial arts, their business with the lance, with the sword, all of that kind of thing. And it gave them prestige. But also there was financial reward. If you win a joust, there is a reward. But you also then go up in the lists. Just like in a football league, you win a match, you go up until eventually you are the king of the joust kind of thing. They were spectacular, but dangerous. You look at those weapons, the lance, eight to 10 foot long. At the beginning, they didn't shatter too easy and they had a razor sharp point on it. It was only later as the joust develops that lances were made to shatter. But there was another joust, far more deadlier than the, the sporting joust. This was where you called out your enemy. Personal combat, it was a duel. No longer the pageant, no longer the great audiences cheering along. This was somber, this was serious, and it was managed by the church because God will decide the winner. You will face your enemy on your horse with your lance with a razor sharp point. The aim of this one is not to unhorse your opponent, it's to kill him. If he is unhorsed, stands up, draws his sword, turn your horse around and ride him down kill him. It's interesting, you know, that jousting developed over hundreds of years. It began in the 11th century, but it was just in an open field. So you imagine there, you're in an open field, you're on your horse, you've got your armour, your lance, and you go straight for the other guy. And they were often accidents. For instance, just a simple thing, you catch your knee against the knee of the guy coming the other way. That's a combined collision speed of between 50 and 60 miles an hour. Legs snapped, thighs torn, white out of their joints. The injuries were horrendous. How about the, the incident where two, no, two knights 
totally miscalculated, and there was a head-on collision. You imagine that on a motorcycle, 60 mile an hour, bang. This is on horses. The flesh, the bones must have been horrendous. Things had got to change. And then there was a couple of fatalities, horrible things. 1252 in Walden in England, a knight was speared straight through the head with a sharpened lance point. It was supposed to be a blunted lance. It was a sporting joust. 1438, John Astley kills Pierce de Massey with a lance point straight through the head. So things have got to change. So on my model, we have the perfect joust. It has a safety rail. And this is where you get the name, the tilt, the tilt yard, because you tilt your lance across the rail, separates the horses. Things now are taking on the joust, the pageant that we're familiar with in, in history and in the films, of course. The famous one, isn't it? The Knight's Tale, which was great when it came to the jousting. Lances now are being made so they will shatter, right? And the rules and regulations. So if you unhorse your opponent, you can't simply then ride him down and kill him. If he stands up and draws his sword, you dismount from your horse, draw your sword and you go at it. If you knock him down and he yields, you can't kill him. There's also, if your lance actually shatters, you've got three lances. So you just ride off to your squire and you get another lance. There are some lovely things uh, attached to this jousting. Uh, of course, there are the rewards. A gold crown, maybe, a bag of gold. There is a story of one man who rode into the list with a lady's silk scarf tied around his thigh. His reward, because he won the joust, was not a gold crown. It was a simple kiss. Now, even though these jousts were being made to be safe, there was one injury that, that I'd read about, which, which is awful. And I, I, I hadn't considered what can happen once the lance point goes into your body. So here is a basic lance or the point. It slid off a knight's shield, went into the side joint of his armour, penetrated the body into the ribs. But then the knight carries on, doesn't he? He doesn't let go of the lance. He actually can't. The lance then twists in the wound and then he's brought out backwards. Ribs will smash, shatter, but they can't be burst out because the armour will keep them in. One of the problems trying to make yourself safe is armour was being improved. You had a lance rest, so your lance is actually fixed. So you can't simply throw it away. It has to be unhooked. So when it goes into somebody's body and twists around, that's absolutely horrendous. Because what they're trying to do is, is make the joust safe on both sides. You have a shield that exploded on contact. But then they got rid of the shield because you had a moulded piece of armour that went around that side of your body and your, la your lance was actually fitted through it. I was reading about the weight. I think it was Henry VIII's armour, 50 kilos, 110 pounds. That is an incredible weight, but of course it was jousting armour. You couldn't wear this stuff to run around the battlefield swinging a sword above your head. This armour was designed to protect you from your opponent's lance and to protect your opponent from your lance. But there were still some terrible, terrible injuries, some incidents which affected the course of history. In fact, one of the most infamous characters in English history was wounded with the point of a lance. Henry VIII, that most infamous king of England, he was a great sportsman. He loved to wrestle in the early years. He loved the longbow. He really did. He was proud of his Welsh heritage and he would often take part in archery competitions and was said to be one of the greatest longbowmen of England. But have a think about it. You're one of the king's bowmen. You're pretty good. If you're in a competition against the king, are you going to beat him every time or are you going to let him win? It's interesting, isn't it? But it was jousting that Henry VIII actually loved. 1524, he had an accident. He was hit in the head and it left him with migraines for the rest of his life. But the most famous, 24th of January, 1536, was when he was hit full on in the head, and he left him unconscious for two hours or more. That's a serious injury. And just to note, from that moment on, it's when he becomes the mean king, puts on the weight because he can't ride around the way he used to do. So jousting 
If you like, change the history of England, then it cost the life of an awful lot of people. But then you got Henry II of France. He died in 1559, another jousting accident. And I've got something to show you what happened. Just bear with me. So here it is. I put together a model showing the splinter of a lance going straight through the right eye socket because this is what happened to Henry II of France in uh, 1559. It went through his eye socket, also apparently the temple here, into the brain, but he survived for a week and died. Sepsis apparently had set in. Now, some of the helmets they designed for Jousten, you got the frog mouth where the the, the rim of the visor was, was wide and you charged like that and at the last second you brought your head up to avoid splinters going into your face. So this is just a salé that I've used just to show. This man must have died in absolute agony, but this signalled the end of jousting in the French court. His son, Charles IX, finished it as far as I can see. In England, it declined as well because warfare was changing. You've got pikemen on the field now who could actually push off the cavalry and, of course, cannons and muskets and things. So jousting was kind of becoming obsolete. But before I finish, I've got the most incredible injury story to show you. So let me put down old Henry here. You know, there's a painting of a jousting injury hanging up in Ambras Castle in Innsbruck in Austria. It's of a Hungarian nobleman. Gregor Bacci, apparently he received a wound through the head with a lance. And I have recreated the very wound for you. Apparently the lance went through his eye, missing the brain, and came out underneath the brain. So what they then do is they saw each side of the lance off. Apparently he lived for another year. Now we don't know the ins and outs of this, all of the evidence we have basically comes from that one painting. But the reason I chose it is it just goes to show the kind of deadly injury you could receive when taking part in the nightly joust. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, like, share and subscribe. And if you'd like to support the channel even more, you can have a look at our Patreon community. The link is in the description. But before I go, a quick mention for a couple of our Patreon members. Now I'm going to read these so I don't get the names wrong. We have Dennis de Saint Aubin Jr. and Cameron Cairns Baker. Thanks a million, guys. But before I actually finish, a quick birthday shout out. Happy birthday, Kate. You know who you are. Bye for now.